In this third part of week two's lecture, we will study the controller that provides steering and velocity inputs to your car. In the previous part, we saw scan matching, an algorithm for localizing the car. Now the car knows where it is and what it's supposed to do. The question is, how does it decide to steer and how does it decide at what speed to drive? This is no different than what a person does when driving. We control acceleration and steering. The algorithm that provides steering and acceleration inputs is Proportional Integral Derivative Control, or PID. PID is a very popular and versatile controller. Its appeal lies in its simplicity and, of course, the results it achieves. It is the controller you get out of the box with the autonomous race car we use in this course. Feel free to replace it with something you find to be better. I'm sure you will find something better. I will present PID in the context of the autonomous race car, but remember, the concepts we cover are much more broadly applicable. Let's set up the scene. The car is driving down a hallway. There are two control goals. First, drive along the center line, shown in dashed blue. Second, stay parallel to the walls. Note that the two objectives are not redundant. The car can drive parallel to the walls, but not along the center line. And it can drive roughly along the center line, but not always parallel to the walls. Mathematically, we express these objectives as follows. First, Define a global reference frame as shown. The origin is on the center line. Define the angle theta as the angle formed by the car and the x-axis. Driving along the center line is expressed as y equals 0. Driving aligned with the walls is expressed as theta equals 0. But we do expect the car to deviate from the center line, so we restate the second objective as follows. You can follow this on the figure. If the car keeps driving at the current angle for another L meters, it will be at some point on the road. If it drives straight ahead, parallel to the walls for another L meters, it will be at another point on the road. The distance between these two, as you can easily verify, is L times sine theta. We want that difference minimized. This gives the car some leeway to come back to center in L meters and therefore reduces jerk in its motion. If you reduce L, you are requiring a more severe constraint on the car's behavior. For our car, we used L equals 1.5 meters. What do we control? We control the steering angle theta. We simply hold the velocity constant. This is suboptimal, but works for now. The first step in PID is to define the error term. In this case, it is simply minus the sum of y, the distance from the center line, and L sine theta, the difference between the destination of driving straight and of driving at the current angle theta. This error term is zero, when the car is on the center line and aligned with the walls. The reason we have a minus sign there will be clear shortly. The control objective can now be expressed as error equals to zero. Let's drive the error to zero. If y is positive, meaning the car is to the left of the center line, we want to steer right, i.e. have a negative theta. If L sine theta is positive, we will be pointed left in L meters. So again, we want to steer right with a negative theta. It is reasonable, therefore, to set the desired theta angle to a positive multiple of the error as shown. It is trivial to verify that this achieves the behavior we described. The case where y and L sine theta are negative can be reasoned about similarly. When, say, y is positive but L sine theta is negative, there is a trade-off between the need to steer right and steer left. This form of control, where the control input is proportional to an error term, is called, unsurprisingly, proportional control. That's the P in PID. We further multiply by a constant C to scale the distances on the right side of the equality to angles on the left side. The beauty of PID control is its simplicity and correspondence to intuition. Its challenge is to choose the gains, in this case, KP for proportional control. In this video, we see the car under proportional control only for KP equals 11. The car is started slightly off center, Y positive, and pointing left, L sine theta positive. It corrects course, overcorrects a little, then drives on. Proportional control follows the error's current value, not how fast it's changing. But if the error term increases quickly, you might want to introduce corrections also quickly. This is where derivative control comes in. In derivative control, we add a term that is proportional to the error derivative, as shown here. Now, the steering angle reacts to how fast or how slow the error is increasing, or indeed decreasing. But derivative control doesn't come for free. There is a trade-off. In the scenario you see here, 
the car is to the right of the center line, so y is positive, and minus kpy term will be negative. Steer right. So y is decreasing. y prime, the derivative of y, is negative. And theta is negative, pointing to the right. The error derivative term, minus y prime minus l cosine theta, is therefore positive. Steer left. The effect of these two conflicting commands is to smoothen out the correction. It takes longer to come back to center, and the trajectory is smoother. Finally, one can include an integral gain term which is proportional to the cumulative error from some reference time t. In our car's case, as we will see, we observe that integral control gives disastrous results. Out of the box, the race car you get implements PD control with KP equals 14 and KD equals 0 0.09. Let's see a video of the car under PD control with the out-of-the-box settings in the hallway outside our lab at Penn. The car starts off-center and pointed left, corrects course pretty smoothly and without much overcorrection, and there it goes. Note how the overcorrection decreased compared to the first video. This is the effect of a larger KP and an added derivative control. Next, we will see the car with too low of a KP value, KP equals 5. We can see the car's distance from center line is larger than in the previous video, owing to a smaller correction applied for the same error value by the proportional controller. Finally, we will see the car under PID control with integral gain KI equals 2. This value of KI causes, well, you can see what it does. The cumulative error exploded, and integral control overcompensated dramatically. That's not to say integral control is bad, period. Only that this value of KI with this error definition does poorly. Out of the box, the race car will have no integral control. In general, the gains are determined empirically. There are some automatic ways for tuning the PID controller. We will include some in the resources page of the website. That's it. Next, you will be doing this week's tutorials.